Hello everyone, good morning. A lot has changed since we last met. I hope you're all safe and healthy. As you all know, the past few months have profoundly changed the way we lead our individual, professional and social lives in a multitude of ways, establishing a completely new normal. However, we are lucky that we live in a part of the world that is well known for its resilience and ability to swiftly adapt and respond to changes. Underscoring this fact, once again, Dubai is bouncing back to normalcy rather quickly, thanks to timely and concerted efforts undertaken by our competent authorities under the guidance of our wise leadership. As a result, Dubai health tourism sector is now open to the world and stands ready to welcome back health tourists. The Dubai government's leading efforts to strictly implement precautionary measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 in coordination with national health authorities and its high-level engagement to assist infected patients in recovery had put the Emirates' advanced healthcare sector once again in the global spotlight. It is against this backdrop that we have virtually gathered here today to be a part of this webinar, Dubai, leads the great comeback. Welcome, we welcome the world back to this exceptional health experience and reaffirm our commitment to offering unparalleled health and wellness services in line with the highest standards and international best practices. Now let us watch a small video that reminds us of what makes Dubai so different from other health and wellness destinations. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Marwan Al Mullah, Chief Executive Officer of the Health Regulation Sector at the Dubai Health Authority, to deliver his keynote address. Dr. Marwan will let us know how Dubai and Dubai Health Experience DXH, the brand of health tourism for Dubai, is paving the way to the return of health tourism and wellness um, as an offering to the world. Uh, welcome to the session, Dr. Marwan. We're all eager to listen to your keynote. Hello, Linda. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I hope you are all so safe and healthy. We all know that the world is currently is navigating unprecedented crisis, a global pandemic that has made its impact felt on multitude of industries and sectors without any discrimination. Needless to say, health tourism is among the sector that were affected by this pandemic. However, thanks to the government's timely and concentrated effort and to deal with the repercussion of this crisis, we are now on the path to recovery. Dubai Health Experience remains committed to supporting 
Dubai in its journey to become the most preferred global health tourism destination and a hub for top accredited health facilities. Uh, a lot of changes have happened in the past few months, but thanks to timely and strategic measures adopted by the authorities to ensure patient safety upon health tourist arrival, Dubai still remains a destination of choice for health tourists even amidst the pandemic situation. The Emirates boosted its effort to attract health tourists post COVID-19 by focusing on preventive and alternative practices. Uh, a lot of you know that uh, Dubai has been, or the UAE has been very active in the dealing with COVID. We have uh, did more than 4 million PCR COVID tests in UAE. Our recovery rate is more than 85%. And uh, thanks God, our mortality, mortality rate is less than 0.6%. So Dubai Health Authority has played a pivotal role in facilitating the Emirates healthcare sector's response to its pandemic. Uh, our frontline healthcare workers are more than 9,000 health professionals who are committed day and night to support the patients to on the journey to recover from COVID. We have more than 30 health facilities, private health facilities in Dubai. They were essential in the dealing with COVID-19 crisis. Uh, in Dubai alone, we did more than 950,000 PCR tests for all the residents and locals of Dubai. Moreover, we focused on active surveillance and we conducted more than 100 tests uh, in Dubai for all the uh, suspected cases. DHA established alternative channels to provide health services to patients during this period, including telemedicine services where we allowed our partners, our private health facilities to, to deliver the service Without the bureaucracy of regulation, we allow them to deliver patient, uh, the medication to the patients, to give the teleservices to the patients, and be supported by the insurance coverage. Uh, we allowed free movement of health professionals among the facilities, and uh, so that we all be part of combating the COVID-19 crisis. We remain, or and during the first half of 2020, our number of health professionals have grown. We have more than 3,300 professionals we licensed during this period. Uh, 45 health facilities were uh, also licensed. Uh, one more hospital during this period, and 10 general and specialized medical clinic we licensed during this period. So this shows that our commitment or our growth in the healthcare sector. If we talk about the health tourism, last year, the, our numbers were around 350,000, where about 28% uh, of these patients came from Arab countries and GCC, 17% of European countries, 34% uh, from Asian countries, uh, where the rest 10% from the Americans and the rest of the world. So these numbers we talked about, the 350,000 in 2019, uh, it was a 4% increase due, uh, comparing to 2018. The expenditure were more than 726 million dirhams in healthcare sector. And uh, post COVID, we are expecting to recover as fast as possible and pick up and complete the journey towards our goal of reaching more than 500 patients per year. Also in Dubai, we support traditional complementary and alternative medicine. We have more than 20 centers in Dubai where they provide these services, uh, eight specialties in the TCAM specialties, and around 234 health professionals uh, specialized in healthcare and uh, TCAM services. So our message today that we want to assure our stakeholders, our patients, that we are back. Dubai is open for business. 
uh, our uh, tourism industry is back, our health tourism industry is back. So even for the patients or population of UAE, they can يعني, consider Dubai with its facilities in the healthcare and wellness as a destination to uh, recover from COVID and uh, the stress after COVID, whether it's a wellness destination or a general checkup or a specific treatment. Uh, most of our hospitals are uh, internationally accredited. We have top experts from around the world. Uh, our wellness destination is uh, world renowned. So, and our precautionary measures for COVID uh, is coordinated with all the sectors, the hospitality sector, the healthcare sector, and the aviation. So rest assured that Dubai is taking care of you. Uh, you will be in a safe hands in Dubai. All the precautionary measures for COVID are taken care of, and you are free to get the best of Dubai from in terms of wellness and healthcare services. So the second message also to our DXH group members that uh, be ready, we are on the path of recovery, expect more patients to come, and uh, our numbers will pick up and we will continue our journey towards our goal of 500,000 and beyond. The last message is to our agencies and planners. We are exactly one month away from a season where usually starts in September to welcome health tourists seeking your assistance and guidance to enjoy unparalleled health experience and the Emirate has to offer. So start planning the agenda today and the XH will always support you in efforts by linking with some of the world's best facilities. We are here along with the, our partners to bring you joy and happiness and health to wellness that unfor unfortunately were put on pause during COVID crisis. But let us be ready to witness Dubai leading its great comeback. It's time for DXH to welcome the world back to its exceptional health experience. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for the inspiring speech, Dr. Merwan. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing Dubai welcoming back health tourists to enjoy an array of experiences. Uh, now, let me introduce uh, Mr. Hassan Kadam, the Chief Executive Officer of the Dubai Corporation for Tourism and Commerce Marketing, uh, to talk to us about Dubai tourism sector outlook for immediate future. And after Mr. Hassan's speech, we will be joined by two key speakers. So please stay tuned. Welcome, Mr. Hassan. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Linda, for the kind introduction and uh, Dr. Marwan for uh, the amazing stats that you have shared. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to just start off by um, uh, thanking you all for being here, thanking the Exech for uh, this uh, amazing opportunity and giving us a platform to speak with yourselves and also to say that our heart goes out to those who were impacted by the uh, pandemic. Um, obviously, we are very proud and very honored uh, to be part of this city and this country who have put tireless efforts all the way from the leadership and the amazing partnership between the private and public sector to ensure that A, the public safety and security is, is um, the far most paramount uh, of importance to us. And of course, next thing being, how can we quickly open up and make sure that this health hygiene measures that have been put into place, along with the safety and security, to ensure that we can start welcoming tourists back into the city as soon as possible. Um, so without further ado, I just wanted to take you through a few slides to show you what we have been up to in, um, over the past uh, few months uh, since the lockdown, the work that we have been doing from a Dubai tourism perspective to ensure that we stay uh, top of mind for, uh, for the world. Um, here's just to show you quickly about um, our marketing approach. So what we've done um, as of late is looked at the May to June period, uh, July to August period, and September, uh, December period. And if you can see with the color-coded uh, graphs here, that our measure was to first to stay top of mind, to ensure that people uh, remember Dubai, think of Dubai, um, but at the same time to show them that we are in this together. It's a global pandemic. We're going through what they're, uh, what they're going through as well. 
And um, you can see in the pink over there that this is a reassurance of safety because it was something that was becoming um, very important for, for the people. At the same time, we kept a brand maintenance message showing them Dubai is quiet, but it's still Dubai and it's still here. July to August period, we started to focus a bit on the travel consideration side. We started to realize that people are starting to get a little antsy. They're getting a little anxious of staying at home within the four walls. And they're starting to search, to dream about the, the opportunity of them to travel again. So we started to send a bit of a travel consideration uh, messages out there doing uh, soft campaigns. But again, making sure that we're maintaining the brand. But as you can see, the reassurance of safety started to become a bit more important. So we started to plug all the amazing effort that's been done by the health authorities here in Dubai, along with the uh, senior leadership within, within the city and the country to ensure those safety measures are being communicated globally. So people realize all the measures that are being put into place. And as we move closer and closer into the end of this period where we are in today and into the next one, which is the third phase, we're starting to look at the convergent aspect. Again, making sure that we are aligning with all our key stakeholders and partners to ensure that we can get them to Dubai soon. The Till We Meet Again campaign was uh, the first part of that. We went out to 48 different markets with a simple message of serenity, quiet, um, um, till we meet again. It's a message of we miss you, but we need to stand together, stand tight. We need to stay safe um, during this period of time and reach uh, achieve close to 20 million uh, views and interactions with uh, with our audience. The next one talks about the promise, which is video two. This time what we did was we focused a bit more on the uh, markets that engaged with the first one. So it reduced to 21 markets that were actively anxious about Dubai, searching Dubai, interested in Dubai. So we made sure that this time we're talking about the promise of what's going to come, things for them to be looking forward to. And we achieved close to 15 million views on this one. Alongside this, what we've also done is we started to engage with the people who have interacted with Dubai in the past, uh, working with influencers, working with uh, journalists, working with people who love Dubai as well. And we started to share with them and we did a partnership uh, leveraging our strong relationship with Google. We sent um, the Google VR boxes across to all of these individuals and started to share with them content that gives them a 360 perspective of a city that they learn to love something that they've been missing out on, to give them a chance to share their experiences within this uh, 3D, uh, 360 experience with the world as well. Again, helping through their means and their channels to communicate Dubai um, even further. Alongside that, we also started to leverage the other partnerships that we've developed over the years. So uh, partners such as Euronews, CNN, CNBC, we started to deep into the content that we have created with them in the past, making sure that the relevant content is, is repushed again to the audiences, plus sending out new information, new content about the city, all the new efforts that have been put into place, all the new measures that have been put into place, conducted interviews, making sure that, again, people are aware that Dubai is here, Dubai is safe, Dubai is secure, and they are ahead of the game and doing everything that it takes to ensure people's uh, safety and security still remains paramount. What we also did was we leveraged a lot of the relationships that we've had with the journalists to make sure that we're sending out amazing stories about Dubai, some about the destination, things that people love to do, would love to do, and also looking at the efforts, as you can see the image there uh, in the Australian New Zealand clip with the heart, where we worked with the private sector, with the hotels, with other properties, who started to send out messages of compassion, of love to all of the people around the world working within the health sector, who are working tirelessly around the clock to ensure public safety and security stays important across the globe. What we also did was in another influencer program is we worked with, um, uh, again, the influencers and journalists and other family members as well, locally and globally, sending out um, pieces of, of uh, uh, whether it's games or puzzles, uh, whether it's the Dubai Monopoly or Lego, where, where uh, families, since they are indoors, they can spend time to work together to entertain themselves and still have Dubai ever present within their experiences as well. Some of the other things that we've actually managed to do in the collaboration is leveraging um, a lot of residence programs, creating a lot of opportunities for, for retail. Again, every time you see that there is an issue or a problem that happens globally, there are new opportunities that come up and things that evolve beyond that past the pandemic. And inshallah, once we, are, we find ourselves out of this, there are so many lessons that we've learned from this opportunity that will become the new norm as part of 
the normal uh, practices for people going forward. Here are just some of the content pieces, throwbacks and, and re uh, reminiscing um, opportunities for the uh, influencers, as well as content that was readily being created with the content pieces that we had sent across to these influencers as well. What we also did was during this period of time, we brought Dubai to people's platforms. Since they couldn't come to Dubai, we took Dubai to them. So we worked with a partnership with uh, the likes of Snapchat. And this has become by far the biggest thing Snapchat has ever done globally and has now become a case study that they use across the globe, where we had Dubai as a backdrop that can be easily placed. And, and this gave people the opportunity to share their favorite spots and favorite points in Dubai with the globe. Again, engaging them, taking them out of their, um, uh, their four walls, even though it's virtually, but at least gives them a chance to be a bit more playful, a bit more candid, a bit more uh, tongue-in-cheek about, about the experiences and, and created a great moment of, of experience and sharing amongst, amongst the people as well. All of this work that we have done uh, during this lockdown period has actually helped move Dubai up across a lot of these uh, channels. And if you can look at the consideration and top of mind, you can see in uh, Dubai became the number one um, on the wish list of destinations between the March and April period of time on booking.com as well as virtual. So you can see it moved up into the top five as number two within Expedia, as well as other uh, platforms as well. Leveraging all of those work, that work that has been done in the past for us, this is just to give you a snapshot of the kind of dialogue that we've already established and reconnected again with the trade. Um, trade are also, of course, our partners on the ground within all of these markets, and the numbers represent the kind, number of offices and number of, uh, of, uh, of partners that we have on ground over there that we are engaging with to ensure that we can immediately start having packages, bundles, experiences that can immediately lead into a conversion. So really working down towards the bottom end of the funnel so that interest turns into consideration and turns into a conversion and eventually a visit into Dubai as soon as possible. Of course, all the efforts that have been put into place across the board by all of the uh, different entities within the city working together hand in hand has given us this proud opportunity of getting the stamp of approval for safe travels by the World Travel and Tourism Council. And also alongside that, we have launched our own um, uh, Dubai Assured program, which is us as Dubai Tourism, DED, as well as the Dubai Municipality, ensuring that all of the technical measures are being put into place. And this is a stamp that is revisited every 15 days to ensure that, yes, you have to achieve the stamp to begin with, but also you need to make sure that you're putting all of those measures continuously in place and it becomes their new norm to ensure that you sustain the Dubai Assured stamp, uh, stamp of approval throughout um, the rest of the time as well. And this is just, again, giving you a, um, qu a quick overview of the international travel movement, something that we're keeping uh, a track of in terms of how we ensure that we are opening up to more and more and more markets uh, as soon as possible, but at the same time, ensuring that we're working well with our own health uh, authorities here, the health authorities within those countries as well, to ensure that they are the right certifications in place before people arrive into Dubai, and also making it easier for people to be able to access tests and also to ensure the safety and security of people arriving into Dubai and more so the people who are within Dubai as well, that they can have a safe uh, journey into the city and a safe visit and stay within the city as well. Thank you so much uh, from my side. Um, Linda, I guess I want to pass it back to you as well. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Hassan, for sharing uh, the Dubai tourism's view and uh, the love message that's being um, spread by Dubai and the Dubai health um, to the world. Uh, we have embraced the world um, during and uh, the, the COVID crisis. Uh, we have been always open arms uh, for the world. We are definitely um, a diverse community by all uh, what this word means. Uh, we um, we are proud uh, to be what we are and what we offer uh, for all the world uh, in Dubai um, in all aspects of life, whether it's uh, tourism, health uh, or investment or the lifestyle uh, that Dubai offers. Uh, really proud of um, all what everybody is, um, is doing here. Um, I think uh, the previous uh, two speeches uh, gave us a clear picture of um, what the outlook of Dubai tourism and the health tourism is for the coming uh, um, times and after the reopening uh, of Dubai. We're not done yet. 
uh, we have now a panel discussion that uh, will help us understand more about Dubai's uh, comeback in health and tourism and evolving health landscape in terms of readiness and repositioning. Uh, our panelists, um, uh, our dear Mr. Sharif Bishara, uh, Chief, uh, Group Chief Executive Officer of the American Hospital. Welcome, Mr. Sharif. Uh, Dr. Tariq Fethi. Chief Operating Officer of MediClinic Middle East. Very welcome, Dr. Uh, and uh, obviously, we have our dear um, Mr. Assam uh, Kalvam and Dr. Merwan, who will continue uh, to be with us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sharif and uh, Tariq, for joining us uh, in this webinar. I will start uh, the first question, uh, and I'm going to uh, direct it to Dr. Merwan. Uh, Dubai, um, Dr. Merwan, has become one of the leading cities uh, that effectively dealt with this pandemic in terms of healthcare. Um, how do you see this and how can this be an advantage in easing uh, the tourists' worries as they are thinking to come to Dubai? Uh, Dubai has always been a dynamic city where we are able to deal with whatever challenges we have in partnership with our colleagues in the private sector. So this uh, COVID pandemic showed us how great collaboration in the healthcare sector and the other sectors were essential to our success in dealing with COVID. So today we are very proud. Uh, more than 60% of COVID patients were dealt in, in the private sector. We opened new facilities and new venues to deal with all the patients from the uh, mild or asymptomatic to the more severe patients. Uh, this was done in a total collaboration, government and private. And uh, now we are ready with the decreasing in numbers to resume work. Dubai is reopen, open for business. Let's come to Dubai and uh, restart the health tourism and uh, enjoy the best of what Dubai can offer. So this is our message today. And we have our colleagues from the private sectors uh, that they can share also their opinion during this period. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my question may be to the, one of the representatives of the private sector, Mr. Sharif uh, from the American Hospital. Um, how can we still ensure patient safety of the health tourists uh, as it will be easing the health tourism and the health tourist journeys upon arrival? What's your perspective on that? Uh, thanks, Ling. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Dr. Marwan. Uh, first of all, let's highlight that any strong re regime can be judged by the response to the pandemic. What Dubai has been done during the pandemic, what Dubai has shown to the whole world, that it really has a very strong healthcare system. It's really have a very well organized and visionary and planned to that. It gives us and to everyone, and especially for medical tourism, how Dubai is safe and how Dubai is ready to accept any medical tourism at any and any time, which may, made our patients and the medical tourism patients more comfortable to come to Dubai. In Dubai or hospital, either it's private or government sector, they following the, the DHA guidelines. There are a few hospitals that they're following the international standard and they're getting the maximum benefits out of their affiliation with the international uh, hospitals and clinics all over the world. I'm talking right now on an American hospital. And you can ha and you have Johns Hopkins here in Dubai. Uh, you have King's College. You have Med 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 Clinic with their affiliation with uh, one of the best in uh, Switzerland. You have the affiliation of American hospital with Mayo Clinic, which is number one in the world. Why may Mayo Clinic choose Dubai to have an affiliation? It's not only choosing of uh, American hospital. No, it's choosing of the system choosing of the visions, choosing of the system and the regime, how it's stable and have a vision for the future for uh, the medical tourism patient and how to get them more welcoming. We should learn from Dubai tourism. We should learn from Dubai overall how to welcome. Medical tourism patient at the end, he's a tourist. We should start welcoming him from his own country. How we start screening him, assign a relationship manager for each and every one of our international patients, there is a relationship manager and uh, there is a medical coordinator. They welcome him 
at the Dubai airport, uh, taking him to his room directly. There is no uh, uh, complicated process doing the, his triage within the room. So that's the medical tourism right now in the medical tourism. He's coming safe, secure, and with easiest process. And that's Dubai. Not about American hospital. I think all the healthcare system are ready for opening the uh, city again and the host comes. Absolutely right. I mean, um, even when um, Dubai Health Authority conceived the, the brand for health tourism, it was conceived with the term Dubai Health Experience because um, we wanted to um, make sure that we go in, in tandem with what Dubai Tourism um, has been working on for all these years, and that is giving um, an experience uh, next to none. And this brings me to um, Mr. Isam, as we've been talking so beautifully about Dubai Tourism. Uh, how can DTCM maybe collaborate further with the healthcare facilities uh, to create those experiences that we all uh, aim to provide for the health tourists. Um, thank you, Linda. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shreve, as well. I think from my side, it's, uh, it's key. I mean, at the end of the day, we've always referred to um, the tourists in Dubai. Uh, we never take them as a statistic and as a number, as visitors. We always talk to them about guests of Dubai as well. Um, and I think that has, uh, alhamdulillah, been uh, part of our uh, fabric, the way that we've been um, groomed um, ever since the beginning of time, that, that Dubai has always welcomed these different nationalities, and, and we have close to 200 different, nationalities, 200 different nationalities that, that have chosen Dubai to be home. And with that in mind, you have so many people who are regularly visiting Dubai um, with their families, or to visit families and at the same time, uh, visit the world-class facilities and take advantage of the world-class facilities that Dubai has to offer. I think for us, from our side, what we need to uh, obviously continue to do more of is uh, we've already conducted a lot of uh, roadshows together. We've also made sure that we are uh, working closely, hand-in-hand, -in, -hand in collaboration uh, between us and the trade that we work with. Trade that I've, I've kind of like shown a small glimpse of um, in one of my slides towards the end, which is people that can actually help us connect with these opportunities that are available in market, working with the local ecosystem to ensure that we have the right packages in place, not just about uh, the individuals who will be visiting here on a wellness or a, or a health visit, but also the family that's accompanying them as well, because we need to make sure that it becomes a well-rounded experience end to end. And we know from our experience from a uh, leisure and business tourism side that, and especially as we've mentioned several points uh, earlier today, when the city works together hand in hand, that collaboration, we know across every single touch point from the airlines, whether it's Emirates or others that travel in, from the airports to the immigration, all the way into, uh, into the, the facilities themselves, to the hotels, every experience can be so seamless. And I know for a fact, and I can confidently say that we have everything on hand to make sure that becomes, Dubai becomes a must visit destination um, for people who are looking for health and wellness, and also a repeat visit destination as well. It becomes a no-brainer that the minute they're thinking about um, where can they go that's safe, that's secure, that has all the world-class facilities and an experience for themselves and their families, Dubai becomes a no-brainer for them as well. Absolutely. Um, I mean, um, we know from uh, many travelers who have come through the Dubai uh, airport um, in the past uh, few weeks, um, that the experience, even with the COVID, has been next to none. So people arrive, it's, everything is seamless, um, they get the testing done very smoothly, a mobile app sends you the result, you are taken care of. So um, the message is loud and clear, and we want it to reach the whole world. Uh, come and enjoy Dubai, and Dubai will take care of you, that's for sure. Um, this takes me to Dr. Jatare. Um, Dr. Tare, in Yani, the, the the past few months have changed many people's uh, minds and thinking about so many different things. Um, so, if we take into perspective the specialities that we do think, uh, from your angle, might still be um, attractive for health tourists to come to Dubai, um, what would they be? And where do you think we are uh, in terms of our preparedness to receive those health tourists? 
Assalamu alaikum uh, and good morning everyone and uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you and uh, my colleagues Dr. Marwan, Mr. Isam and uh, Mr. Sharif to, uh, to be with you here today. Um, just over over the last uh, couple of months and uh, uh, during the pandemic, definitely everyone was busy and I think Dubai actually set a role model of how to contain this pandemic and that gives a very, very good infrastructure for us and it, it was actually a very good proof to how strong and agile the healthcare system of Dubai. Uh, now, we over the last few weeks, we were actually busy analyzing what could be the, the patient needs for medical tourism. And if we look to the potential needs for the patients to start coming to Dubai for medical tourism, we can group them into uh, the first category, which is uh, wellness and preventative. Uh, and that definitely we can uh, 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 have on the technology, the state of the art the genomics and precision medicine departments available now in Dubai. There are uh, recently a few genomics lab and uh, precision medicine where patients actually can easily understand their, their health needs and uh, uh, a personalized lifestyle and what they can do and uh, uh, can avoid to in improve on their, their health uh, uh, needs. Uh, the next aspect or the next group of patients will be uh, looking for enhancement, which is a cosmetics and plastic surgery. And definitely Dubai is very well known. There are very, very good established uh, cosmetics centers, plastic, all advanced state of the art. The latest technology is also available here. Uh, the third group of patients will be definitely looking at, and with that we need to work closely with the, uh, 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 the uh, travel agencies and Dubai Health Tourism, which is uh, uh, the holiday health. This is for patients who have chronic illnesses, like I'll give an example, the dialysis patients. Uh, we need to actually start planning for them before their trip about their session that can actually suit their, their uh, 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 leisure plans. And we can plan for them a package which includes actually their dialysis sessions. And the last but not least group of patients who will be actually looking for the tertiary care services, which do buy as uh, my colleagues referred to, is very well known now. A lot of international players, uh, MediClinic is one of them, American Hospital with their affiliation in Mayo Clinic, and many others have presence here, providing a widespread of uh, tertiary care, subspeciality, starting from uh, open heart surgery to cancer treatment, uh, 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 to vascular surgery, uh, organ transplant, robotic surgery, so Dubai actually managed to build a very, very strong healthcare system. And I think we have so many areas that we can really attract medical tourism to Dubai. Um, wonderful, uh, Dr. Saleh. That's very reassuring uh, that Dubai is definitely uh, out there and ready. Um, this takes me maybe for a question to Dr. Marwan. Um, in the current situation, uh, from your angle, how do you see um, that we can all collaborate um, to make Dubai the destination of choice for health tourism? I know the world is looking for uh, safety. This is now the, the language that everybody speaks. They want to travel because everybody needs to travel. Um, and even uh, they need it more than before to recuperate. Um, so how can we all, uh, in terms of the, um, the different uh, parts of the business, the health and the tourism, how can we uh, make this uh, happen? Yes, Linda, this is an excellent question. Dubai assures safety from the beginning, from starting from the airport to the hotels, to the hospitals or the wellness centers. So like uh, Mr. Asan mentioned, uh, DTCM, they assure the safety of the hotels and they regularly uh, check that the hotels are fulfilling the standard for uh, COVID precautions. And also from our side, uh, DHA, we are also working with our hospitals and private uh, partners to ensure that all the precautionary measures for the safety for the patient are taken care of. Even if you take the, to the malls, also the, our malls with the safe uh, social distancing and wearing the masks, we all, as a community, we participate actively to assure that uh, the comprehensive control of COVID patients and COVID uh, uh, pandemic 
that's reflecting in our numbers. Thanks God, the numbers of cases in Dubai decreased dramatically. While we see in other countries, maybe it's not under control, but in Dubai, it's under control and beyond. It is uh, decreasing and hopefully we will reach to the level that uh, we can uh, uh, go back to business and uh, with the advances in healthcare, we are hearing a very good uh, news regarding the success of uh, immunization trials. And in fact, uh, one immunization trial is happening in Dubai, in UAE, I mean. So, and other countries also that are conducting the same. So, life should go on. We assure the patients and the visitors to Dubai as whole that uh, Dubai is taking care of you. We are taking all the necessary measures to assure your safety and uh, we are interested in your wellness and your health and your happiness also and we are looking forward to repeated visits to Dubai and uh, a successful wellness and health treatment in Dubai. Thank you, Dr. Marwan. Uh, Dr. Tariq, um, how do you see um, second medication Dr. Tariq, second medical opinion has proven to be a very um, successful um, program that Dubai, a tour of Dubai ex- health experience started a few months ago. Um, how do you see this contributing to um, the return of health tourism for Dubai? I think second medical opinion is now more accessible and more available, uh, definitely through the international affiliations. Many of the healthcare providers here uh, uh, have established, um, uh, like what I mentioned, MediClinic have an affiliation with Hirsch London Group in Switzerland. American Hospital have affiliation with Mayo Clinic for second opinion. And thanks for Dubai technology infrastructure, which makes things much easier now through telemedicine that the patient actually can have the consultation with the doctor anywhere in, in the world, and definitely within the healthcare system itself, through our, our healthcare professionals, that can be organized and that can be done. So there will be a, a, a proper continuity of care that we can obtain uh, a second opinion and the patient will get uh, the treatment physically here here in Dubai with, with our colleagues. So I think uh, uh, the access to international players is, is definitely adding value and will help us to attract more patients through the medical tourism. Um, Dr. Merwan, in the past uh, few months, uh, we know that uh, telemedicine has been um, a very successful tool. Um, can you tell us about the journey, please, um, that uh, telemedicine had taken uh, with, uh, with COVID and before COVID? Yes, uh, telemedicine services uh, was uh, already active in Dubai before COVID. In fact, last year, uh, DHA uh, embarked on a journey and a project to activate Doctor for Every Citizen, where it is one of the initiatives of Sheikh Hamad bin Rashid to provide telemedicine services for all its local patients. And uh, we worked with our partners, the private sector. We enabled this service. We made uh, changes in regulation to allow tele-prescription of medications and delivery of medication. So it's just by coincidence when COVID happened, we were already launched uh, Doctor for Every Citizen in December 2019. And uh, we, in fact, we expanded the patient base to allow all the nationalities to avail of the service. Uh, we understand that there was a, like a, Patients were encouraged to stay at home if it was not an uh, emergency case, to stay at home, use or utilize the telemedicine service, and the medication will reach you. And also, the, from the health regulation side, we allowed the service to happen in the private sector. In fact, we told them you can start these services before applying even. So at that time, we had to uh, utilize an agile approach of regulation where we support our partner, the private sector. Uh, We enabled them to treat the patients remotely and uh, so that the hospitals themselves, they cater for COVID patients. So that was an excellent uh, experience. And after COVID, we need to continue this momentum. 
So all these changes, all these benefits that we happened, uh, it will be continued and it will be allowed because it, during this time, it uh, proves its success and safety for the patients. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest uh, worries that we had uh, on our mind as regulators uh, during the COVID is um, the safety of the patients and the continuity of care for those who are non-COVID, but they still need the access to health care. And uh, thankfully, with all the, um, uh, the forward thinking um, that uh, our leadership had through the years, we have reaped the benefit of it during the COVID crisis. And it, we were able to quickly um, bounce up and rebound uh, very quickly without any dips. And it was a very smooth sale. So we used all those uh, ready infrastructures in terms of technology and thinking. Um, and I think that is what, uh, what Dubai was very unique in this forward thinking and positivity and the collaboration between the private and the government sector. Um, so um, if I if I want to ask uh, Mr. Sharif here, uh, being, um, yeah. a, um, was I being heard? Yeah, I think so. Um, Mr. Sharif, um, being a group CEO and also you are into the investment side, um, do you feel uh, that, uh, you know, is it it's a you feel safe to invest further in healthcare in Dubai? And would that be something that you think um, the health sector will be looking into expanding in the coming uh, times? See, Linda, when you think about the investment, you have to figure out first what's the status of the country. What's the status of the regime? What's the stability of the economic? When you see a country that 12 to 15 percent of its budget, it's assigned for technology and innovation. It gives you an in, as an investor as a sign. When Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin His Highness announced in 2014 DXH and how he and the leader and the whole country interest and concentrate on the medical tourism and grow the future of this. That's reflect a vision. When you think as an investor, you should make sure that there is a vision for the country, there is a proper structure and proper strategy, then you will start investing on the areas to complete that vision. And we at Muhammad and Abed al Mola and uh, American Hospital, we believe in the country, we believe in our leader. That's why before the COVID, for example, we invest a millions of dollars at the robotic surgery, and we brought one of the finest technology in robotic surgery in the world. And at that time, we were the only robotic surgery program with the new EE, okay, operating on uh, Da Vinci XR. And uh, that was great, because within a couple of months, and when the pandemic attacked uh, the healthcare, we succeed to operate on 115 or 110 Patients, extremely complicated with zero complications, with zero infections, which has helped us a lot on the investment in technology. When you see that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid in 2018 and asking that, guys, the AI and technology should be everywhere on, and in each sector in Dubai. And when the pandemic attacked us, we figure out very, very, very nothing from my perspective as a resident. Dubai hasn't stopped. Dubai is not reopened. Dubai hasn't stopped. All the activities is continue. All the government activities continue. Nothing is stopped. Why? Because it's well prepared. So if you, if you want to think as an investor, always focus on the vision of the leader of the, of the territory. When you have the leader of Dubai, you can invest blindly, especially in healthcare, because there is a, a very clear vision for the government in healthcare. And the last point that I want to, to raise it, that's what pushes us to put a huge investment to settle. The first artificial intelligence research lab within the region that's based in Dubai, it's not based in American hospital. 
that's our contribution as a Muhammadan Abid al Mullah group and the American houses for that for the country. Yes, we done it, we invested, but all the hostel without uh, exceptions, all the government hostel without e exceptions, were more than welcome to utilize that tool to go for the next phase of the next era. Thank you. I hope I'm clear. Very clear. <laughs> uh, Dr. Tarek, uh, from your angle, um, I mean, in the past few months, uh, we saw how strong the, um, the health professionals' uh, knowledge and experience that we had was really sufficient for us to, to be strong and to be able to weather uh, the, the crisis and be strong. Um, do you see that uh, visiting doctors' um, programs um, can enhance um, the expertise that we have? Uh, do you think that that needs to be um, something that we need to work further on um, to um, encourage health tourism? What's your perspective on that? I think uh, if, if we look backward, uh, Linda, uh, uh, Many years ago, uh, there was quite a big scope for visiting doctors, perhaps to to add and uh, help Dubai to establish the, the uh, certain gaps in the system. However, over years, Dubai Health Authority have managed actually to uh, develop a strategy. They managed to invest a lot in technology, in infrastructure, uh, develop uh, a very very agile and uh, international regulations which created a lot of trust for world-renowned doctors and through the healthcare system and the whole Dubai, Dubai as a lifestyle, Dubai as a community, uh, it attracts a lot of doctors now that it's not anymore a visiting. This is a place where I would like actually to live. Uh, uh, one of the things which a lot of the world-renowned doctors actually were missing here in Dubai was two components. One is research, the second one is academia. And if we see over the last 10 years, this is one of the big focus of Dubai government, research and academia. Muhammad bin Rashid University is established now in Dubai and got a very good reputation and a lot of world renowned doctors coming from all over the world now to move to continue their academic activities as well as their clinical practice. And when it comes to research, the research get a lot of funds, a lot of support. It's one of actually the the, uh, the key uh, uh, strategy for, for Dubai government now. So more and more, there is a lot of uh, world-renowned doctors, a lot of skills has been added to the healthcare system. And as I mentioned before, that was proven during the pandemic. We have, like uh, Dr. Marwan mentioned, we have one of the lowest mortality rate in the world. We actually managed to rebound back in a very short time. Like what Mr. Sharif said, Dubai actually never closed down. If you see, actually, everyone was normally, and so the only thing is everything was serviced to you at home, either through apps or through websites, but everything was available, all the services. Uh, we saw some other healthcare systems actually how, how much they suffered, but in Dubai, the healthcare system was actually very, very strong, and they coped with the surge very well. So uh, I think there might be a scope in certain areas uh, for visiting doctors, but I think this is uh, going to be limited more and more through actually the attraction and a lot of more and more uh, doctors actually now would like to relocate to Dubai and uh, I, I have no doubt that in the near future Dubai will be actually exporting clinical experience to the other countries around us as a visiting doctors from Dubai. Thank you so much, Dr. Tara. Mr. Hassam, uh, from the perspective of um, DTCM, um, what do you see next? Uh, and how do you see the future? And how do you see health tourism being weaved in, um, in the offerings of Dubai for tourism and for attraction? I think, I mean, when it comes to the health tourism side, uh, I think my esteemed colleagues here uh, have been, have been uh, very detailed about it. From, from our perspective, what I can say is, I know for a fact that going forward, as part of the new norm, 
more and more people are definitely looking at the health uh, and, 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 and the measures um, far more strictly now when they decide on the next destination that they're going to travel to. And I think uh, the measures that, that, that the teams have been taking uh, locally is going to really put Dubai right up there with the rankings. We've always had an um, ambitious target for ourselves. Um, following the, the, the message of, of Sheikh Hamid that impossible does not exist in our, in our dictionary or in our lexicon. And we truly believe in that. And I think as Dubai is a city, private public sector, they, we truly believe in that. And going towards what uh, Dr. Tarak has said, Dr. Marwan and also Mr. Sharif highlighted very clearly, this is why people have that trust when they come to investing in Dubai, to moving to Dubai, and also visiting Dubai. So for us, of course, it's making sure that that message continuously, go, uh, continuously goes out. And I think what Dubai did during the pandemic has really all of a sudden triggered to those who were unaware that, wait a second, Dubai has this world-class standard, these facilities that we probably were not aware of. And now they will make sure that this becomes part of that, that journey as well. We have, alhamdulillah, seen growth in tourism numbers for Dubai. When we set out a target for ourselves back in 2013, we had 10 million visitors. And even during the challenging time of 2018, 2019, we saw growth um, that, that has taken us up and maintaining our number four position of the most visited city globally. And again, for Dubai to have that number compared to all of these well-established, globally renowned tourism destinations is something we're very, very proud of. And I can tell you for, sure, for certain that we are sure 100% that even when it comes to the healthcare side of things and the health and wellness tourism side of things, Dubai has already established an amazing, amazing foundation for itself. And it's all about building on that foundation now to see bigger and bigger growth for that, inshallah. 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 Uh, I will ask the same question to Dr. Marwan. Uh, how do you see uh, the near future uh, for health tourism in Dubai? Yes, uh, as Mr. Assam said, uh, health will be an important factor for all tourists. So uh, for choosing their next destination, uh, whether their primary focus is uh, being a tourist or the health, uh, they will look at each country, what's the infrastructure in terms of healthcare, uh, and, uh, if they are coming specifically for treatment. So Dubai has already uh, established itself and uh, assured the patient also uh, for the period after COVID so this is one factor that will attract patients to Dubai and normal tourists also to Dubai. The second thing also, uh, we will build on the uh, adoption technologies and advances of technologies. We have, uh, as uh, Mr. Sharif mentioned, we have robotic surgeries, we have telemedicine. Uh, so all these advances, Dubai has the infrastructure to support it in terms of regulation, in terms of uh, telecommunication, uh, so everything is open and uh, we are uh, here. We have uh, يعني, a very flexible regulation that allow innovation in healthcare. We have also 3D printing in healthcare. So all these will attract more patients and you know uh, more even uh, uh, health professionals, surgeons to choose Dubai as a destination. If they want to do like a visiting surgery, visiting doctor's program, they will also use Dubai as a destination uh, and uh, to add to their portfolio, uh, so to cover more patients around the world. So uh, Dubai within the, the infrastructure and geographical location, we are a reach of uh, billions of uh, population and uh, they can all reach us uh, with our uh, infrastructure, with our airport. And uh, yeah, yeah, as Mr. Sharif said, we have not closed, uh, but we are uh, repicking. And uh, next year, inshallah, we will be having Expo also. So we are expecting more patients and more visitors to Dubai. And uh, we welcome all and uh, wish all the best for everyone. I just want to, uh, Linda, if you don't mind, I just wanted to add to what Dr. Marwan just said. And uh, what we always talk about is Dubai and its geographical location is within uh, a three to four hour radius of one third of the world's population. And within an eight hour flight radius, we're within two thirds of the world's population. So that just shows you the potential that Dubai has. You're absolutely right. You know. 
I think Dubai has embraced that very well and taken the lead in, in welcoming everyone and embracing everyone in Dubai. Um, if I can ask the private sector to tell us their perspective on where, what they think the future will hold for health tourism, maybe I can ask Dr. Tariq to start commenting. Yeah, I think from from uh, a private sector and specifically from MediClinic, you you mentioned about investment, and uh, we definitely uh, focus and we we invest in more. We trust the Dubai system. MediClinic has been here for years, and uh, uh, the good thing about Dubai that uh, uh, every challenge is an opportunity of a new success, and that's something which we really uh, uh, enjoy being here in Dubai. And uh, it's, it's enough to say, I mean, my colleague Sharif mentioned about robotic. During actually the pandemic, we have launched our robotic surgery also program. We successfully managed to recruit one of the trainers in, pro uh, in, in robotic surgery as well. Uh, so we, we trust the system and we believe in actually Dubai is going to be greater than what it was before even in healthcare tourism. We hopefully in 1st of September, we will launch a, a precision medicine department and a big genomics lab uh, with the latest and state-of-the-art technology. Uh, that will definitely support, as I mentioned, because this is the biggest scope now in wellness and preventative uh, uh, healthcare needs. So we believe that Dubai is going to be stronger. I think now we are ready for the next spike and, and spike, and, and we believe actually that this is not going to be too far. And we are ready for it, and we look forward to support the government vision in this uh, uh, strategy. Absolutely. I mean, the past few months have been a witness uh, of all what you have said, and we have all been, all of us, in different meetings, uh, on different levels, discussing uh, what to do and working hand in hand, shoulders to shoulder, uh, to weather the, the crisis. And um, really, it was uh, amazing to see the... Um, how much Dubai can offer uh, to its people and its visitors. And, and that's what's really unique about this gorgeous city. Um, Mr. Sharif, can I uh, get your perspective? Sure. That's great. Uh, first of all, I, I love the pictures of Dr. Morona and I saw next to each other because once the healthcare sector and the DTCM working closely together, I believe that will not be stronger we already Dubai already strong, but we can be the destination of the healthcare and the medical tourism within the world. When Mr. Hassan saying that third of the world is three, four hours and the majority is seven, eight hours. Guys, I believe we can compete with the whole world. Right now we have the latest American standard within Dubai. We have the, rate, the latest bridge standard within Dubai in healthcare. And there are many other countries without naming, they cannot access those countries. They can easily come to us with their families, getting the healthcare treatment, Stay, their family enjoying the Dubai and the whole Emirates with much easier procedure and much easier accessibility. Dubai, my dream to Dubai, we have a great static and great dermatology and cosmetics and all of these programs. But I'm dreaming to Dubai to be the, the destination for the heart transplant within the region and for the whole world. I'm dreaming to, to have the best cancer center. That's why American Hospital takes the, the responsibility by mid of next year, we're introducing the first smart and comprehensive oncology center 90% operating by AI and technology. That's not for us, that's for Dubai. That's our, that's our payback to Dubai. All the healthcare sector, all the private sector, we got the benefits of Dubai, we got the benefits of Emirates and life. We got benefit of that, it's time to pay back. So I believe that cardiology, cancer treatments, and before the treatments, how to utilize the technologies for the diagnosis, before the diagnosis, how to get the Dubai, the destination to predict for the disease and to stop, to stop spreading and treat the people. That's all about technology. We cannot 
be part of Dubai and we cannot be way ahead from all of the all over the world in technology. If you want to see really the standard of healthcare in Dubai and all of us are traveling abroad, going to Europe, going to America, all my respect to all countries and see our hospitals and our standard without exception. I'm not talking American hospital, forget American hospital now. Medi Clinic, King's College, Kiliman. So Latifa Hospital, one of the hospitals that which is government, no one knows that they have one of the top laparoscopic gynecologist, surgeon within the whole world. It's top four. People are coming from all over the world to this guy to get the treatment at the government hospital in Dubai. So right now we, we should stop talking about government, private. We are a healthcare sector. We should build the future of the medical tourism within, the, within Dubai and think big. Transplanet center, that should be our goals. Kidney transplanet, liver transplanet, heart transplanet. We have all. And that's bring us to, if I might disagree a little bit with Dr. Tariq, at the beginning, no, you need the visiting doctors to come, the professors from all over the world, to start the service within the Dubai hospitals, train our surgeon and physician for a while, then depend on ourselves. And that's the history of Dubai. From the past, we brought the consultants, they trained people. Right now, when we say emiratization, see on each single area, you have the top talents from UE nationals. So we need a visiting doctor for a while. Then we can say easily, we are the most prepared city on the world to take over the destination of the medical tourism. And I'm sure will continue, I have no doubt, to evolve the welcome of medical tourism during difficult time, more than simple time. Thanks. That was beautifully said, uh, Sharif, really beautiful. Um, I mean, I don't want to make it longer for any of you. It was a very, very insightful discussion and a, quite an interesting uh, session. Uh, I thank all our panelists uh, again for joining uh, and uh, drawing us a clearer picture uh, of the recovery in terms of uh, health tourism. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all those who have helped us uh, to make this session uh, uh, come into life and thank all those who are uh, following us and watching us now. Uh, the message is loud and clear. Uh, we continue to work hard to attract more health and wellness tourists to our beautiful Emirates by spreading awareness uh, about the wide range of world-class services and facilities that are available throughout Dubai. We are confident by all means uh, that Dubai is uh, the ideal location uh, to spend uh, a post-COVID uh, wellness uh, sojourn. So um, join us in Dubai soon. And thank you, everyone. <laughs>